Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily, and I got my beautiful albino head pied Burmese python around my neck. And unfortunately, I don't know how much longer I'm gonna have her for. Now they change these crazy laws down here in Florida, and the berms are gonna be illegal. Look how beautiful this girl is. Look at this pattern on this girl. You can see the head pie definitely changes the pattern. Um, she's not a typical looking albino for, for sure. And she's nice and big. She might even have some eggs in her. I've been breeding her this year, and she's awesome. I love this snake. Oh, do it. Am I, am I heartbroken that I have to get rid of these, these snakes? I don't even... I don't even know how to describe it. I mean, you have like one of your favorite projects of all time and you can't even keep those snakes. It's, it's, it's heartbreaking. We don't really know what the, what the official word is yet. I mean, in terms of when everything's gonna go down time wise, but eventually it's gonna happen. And uh, so if anyone is interested in my berm projects, I've already had a few people reach out to me, let me know. The, the pie project is, these, I have uh, two sisters, they're albino, have pies, also possible Head caramels that are uh, going to be paired with a visual male pie, and I have shown it before. You guys can reach out to me on that, but that's not what I'm talking about today. Today is going to be how to handle snakes that can be scary, you know, from big snakes. These are little puppy dogs, but when these berms are babies, they're they can be a little feisty. And that's because they're scared and they're nervous. When they get bigger, they get confident. They're like, hey, I'm big, no one's gonna bother me. And that's why they, they kind of chill out. But a lot of people are afraid, you know, they don't want to get bit. Uh, I'm going to show you a little bit, at least how I've learned to deal with the baby berms because they can be, like I said, a little feisty and, and how to go about getting them out of the enclosure. Because a lot of people bought berms from me or want to buy berms and they're maybe a little nervous about the babies because like I said, they can be a little feisty. Sometimes they'll musk on you too when they're, when they're little because they get scared. They just, hey, they don't want to be bothered. They'll pee on you. So I'm going to show you how I get them out of the enclosure and how you kind of can tame them down and I know a lot of people have been wondering that and I've got a few questions over the last you know couple weeks about that so we're gonna take a look at that and then we're gonna see if we have any clutches that were laid here in uh, Palumbo's pythons and boas snake room uh, I know a lot of bull pythons are laying on their back and you never know what eggs might be there so let's check it out all right guys um I'm here I have a, I took out one of my tubs of one of my Burmese pythons from 2020 still I would consider still a hatchling I don't feed my baby berms a lot of food because I don't want them to get huge because then it's hard to ship them. Uh, at least not the ones that I'm keeping. So this is my uh, green granite, okay? Whenever you pull a tub out, okay, and you want to handle a baby berm because they can be feisty and because they're, once again, they're scared, you don't want to just reach right in and grab them because that's the first thing. They're going to like, they're going to flee. They're going to want to flee. They're going to want to get away. They're going to want to musk you. They're going to want to pee on you. They're going to, they're going to snap at you and bite and that, that's usually, you know, that's 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 a protective mechanism that they're uh, born with, you know. So in the nature, they're not going to get eaten, okay? But we're not trying to eat these snakes. So what I do is I, I do the paper towel trick. Now, if you're really nervous, you can get a glove, something like this. You can buy these on Amazon or reptiles base, reptilebasics.com. You can put a glove on so you don't get bit if you don't. These things are great. They get the little metal spike. These things, they can bite the heck out of this even a big snake and you're not gonna, it's not gonna hurt. Um, if you wanna be a little more daring, you don't even need to use that. I find that they enjoy feeling skin, your skin touching theirs, it makes them feel comfortable if you do it the right way. I do the paper towel trick. So I take a paper towel and I put it over the top of them. I lay it over the top of them. Now, what they can't see usually calms them down because when they see you reach in with your hand, they're gonna, they're gonna get nervous. So if you, if you cover them up and you lift them up with the paper towel, they tend to be a little bit more laid back. Now, I have this snake here, you can see. She's a little nervous because I'm holding her, okay? And she was just in a nice, comfortable container. So she's gonna try to flee. I got her in the paper towel and got her covered up. And she's just gonna get used to feeling my hands now. That's the key. You want to get her to, used to feeling your skin on her skin. And, and look, she's trying to bury herself. She's trying to get away. She wants to hide. That's, that's normal for a snake, a little baby snake, because she's afraid that she's going to be eaten. And remember, I don't handle these every day. Um, so they're not like, you know, these are not tamed down yet, okay, per se. I handle them once a week, you know, maybe uh, to clean them. And obviously I feed them once a week. But, 
it, as you can see, I'm not moving fast. I'm moving very slow. Um, I'm just letting her feel my skin, touching her skin. I'm trying to let her do what she wants. Sometimes they can get a little frisky and try to start moving a little too fast. And that's when sometimes you can get musked or they can try to start biting if they feel like you're restraining them. So you don't want to hold them too tight. Is that not going to like? Then they're going to turn on you and they're going to try to bite you sometimes. See, now, once again, this is a snake that bit this just as you know fran frenetic and crazy as every little hatchling that you know that's produced very few hatchlings are easy to hold even right out of the egg they want to they want to get away but i took her out slowly i did the paper towel trick by covering her up and you can see this beautiful she's got great color this is a green granite so this is the granite combined with the green gene green is, is a patternless she's got a really nice looking cool grayish coloring and now she's calmed down and now she thinks she sees I'm not a predator I'm not here to hurt her I'm not trying to restrain her but I'm trying to guide her in where she's going and she's like okay this is cool now not all of them are gonna are gonna be this calm some of them might all of a sudden just start freaking out and go crazy and want to like get away from you and that's fine now, I dropped the paper towel purposely now I got her exclusively in my hand I'm not covering her up and she sees okay He's fun. He's not trying to hurt me. He's not scaring me. He's not making sudden movements. I feel comfortable with this. Okay. And the berms like to come out. The Burmese pythons like to come out. Um, they like to explore. They like to chill. You know, they're not like ball pythons that like to like be inside of a termite mound the whole day. That's ball pythons love to be in their tubs, you know, under high box. They don't want to be bothered. But that's where they enjoy uh, hanging out. Burmese pythons are not like that. They, they like to move. And especially when they get big, they want to come out and exercise a little bit. I mean, why wouldn't it? Wouldn't anyone want to? I mean, you wouldn't want to be in a, in, a, in a jail cell the whole day long. So it's nice to take them out. And this is why a lot of people love them as pets. That's why I like them. You know, when I talk about my snake collection, um, as far as the ones I consider to be pets, it was always the berms because they're, they're the snakes I want to take out and hold and play with. I want to feel that how th that big, thick musculature that they have. It's cool, especially when they're big. You saw the in the intro when I had that big female around my neck. It's just it's a it's a cool conversation piece and snake to have. And this is the key. And the key also is when you when you're done playing with these guys or taking them out for some exercise or just even just cleaning. You put them back in the same relaxed, controlled way. You don't move fast. You don't just toss them back in, because that that leaves a bad last impression on them. And then that last impression is what sticks in their head. And then the next time you go into the tub to take them out, they want to bite the crap out of you again. So, so you want to leave them with a good final impression. So you know, let's say now I'm cleaning the tub. I'm taking out the stuff. Once again, I'm still holding her. Once again, also with a big snake, and even a snake of this size, you want support. You don't want them to feel like, hey, I, my back is hurting me because I have so much weight pulling down on me. Then then that's not a positive experience they're having with you. That's a negative experience. You do not want them to have a negative experience. So I'm replacing some of the paper towels that were a little dirty here. I got their high box. I got our high box back here. Change this one out too. And get some of this urates out of here, give her some fresh water, this is her, her tub now is clean and this is ready to go and I'm going to put her back into it, but I'm not going to put her back into it and then grab her and drag her back over there, I'm going to take her and the tub back to the rack, I'm going to put the tub back, slide it back in so that it's almost ready to go and I'm just going to let her go right into the tub on her own so that she is doing it on her own terms and she had a very positive experience with me. And next time, like I said, I reach into this tub or next time I go to take her out, she's gonna say, wow, that was a positive experience last time. I wanna come out and I wanna play. And she's not gonna, and that doesn't mean she still won't be a little skittish when she first comes out. If you do this every day, repetitively, eventually the snakes will be ready for you. To, they'll be waiting for you to come out. You could actually open the tub and they'll come out on their own and you can grab them and, and that's what you want look she's coming out here and she's look i'm picking her up she's not having any negative experiences she's not messing up she's not scared and she's having a very good experience today with me and that's going to be something i'm going to build upon so that you know when someone does buy her for me 
they're going to take home the snake and they're going to be like, oh, wow, okay. I see how Dave you know, handles her. I'm going to try to do the same thing and, and continue that relationship with the snake. And then as she gets bigger, she's going to get better and better. And pretty soon it'll be, like I said, having like a little dog. <laughs> you just open the cage and they'll come out. I hope this helped uh, for those of you who have asked. And uh, it's not that hard. You know, if you're nervous to touch it, once again, the paper towel trick. You put the paper towel over the top of it. When they can't see it, they're not going to attack that paper towel, I promise you. Um, just cover them up so they feel comfortable and they don't see you and they don't see any kind of fast, quick movements because that's not what, that's what's going to rattle them and it's going to get them going crazy. Okay? Let's go and check out the rest of the snake room and see if there's any ball python clutches. You're looking at some very dehydrated eggs that luckily um, Kirsten, who works for me, uh, found. I don't know how I missed these. They're super dehydrated. I don't even know when this, these were laid, but it was a very important clutch. So before I reveal what the clutch is, I, I am putting them in my egg box, super high, 100% humidity. I hope we can rehydrate these. I hope they're not too bad. They do, they're not completely dried out, but they're just really dimpled in. I mean, that they should not be like this after, you know, just being laid. They should be very plump and, and hydrated. Uh, I, I hope they're not dead. Uh, it would be bad, bad on me if they are. So we're gonna take a look at these uh, now, and notate this, and then in the next 24, 48 hours, we'll take a look at them again and see if they plump up. I really hope they do because I, this was a really, this was an important clutch for me. All right, so this is the clutch. I'm just, I just opened the incubator up and I have left them in there for a couple days. And you know, and I don't know if these, I don't think, I don't think these snake, these eggs are gonna make it. These are really dried out still, even though they've been in, in this, um, with the sponges and the wetness and everything like that. I just don't think that they're absorbing enough moisture. I think maybe they, it was already too late. This one looks like maybe it might make it. This, these three look like they're ready to, to turn to mold. Uh, you know what, it was bad, bad on me. I missed the clutch somehow. I don't know how this female laid without me seeing it, but I don't know, maybe the eggs were not going to be good anyway. It's, it's weird that, you know, they wouldn't be fine for a day or so under the female. Once again, it could have been that, you know, they were not good to begin with, but they, the fact that they were all dimpled in like this just goes to show you that they did actually dehydrate. And the fact that I'm seeing some little flies in here, probably not a good sign. Once again, I'm going to keep them in the incubator. We'll see how they do over the next couple of days, but I'm not really expecting very much from this clutch. Here's a beautiful albino female that I bred to an albino pied. So we're gonna get albinos that are head pied, 100%. So everything will be albino and everything will be 100% head pied. And, you know, I love albino pieds. So I figured uh, a lot of people have been asking me about those and I always run out of them really fast. So I think you know, people love albinos and the albino head pies are way more affordable than the albino pies. So I think, I think they'll sell very well. I was shocked that this female actually went. I actually had a male in with her like, a, like about a week or two ago. I, I thought she wasn't even gravid. She was, she's so small and she really didn't eat very much. You never could tell though. A lot of times it's just age with these, with these guys. Once they're at the right size and they're right age, they don't even need that many meals. And, and they're not gonna have a huge clutch of eggs if they're not that big, but they'll still produce, you know, good eggs. I mean, this female looks like she's got some nice eggs in there. There's a couple sluggies in there, but there's uh, there's definitely some good ones as well. So we're going to pull her and grab her eggs. So this gorgeous albino who just gave birth, brought her outside in the sunlight here. She's got this really nice pattern, really light albino, very white. Um, just cleaned her off. She's ready to just relax now, get well hydrated. Hopefully start eating next week. She's a, she's not a great eater to begin with. As you can see, she's small. She's small, but she's got age on her. She's several years old. She's like four or five years old. And she laid a very small clutch, but hopefully we'll get some uh, viable babies out of that. And we'll get those on the website once they hatch, you know. Once again, albinos. People love albinos. They love albino hep pies. Tremendous potential in that. The albino pies are gorgeous, especially when they're born. They're beautiful and so sometimes you, you got to produce what your customers want and this is a really really nice looking albino very light so let's put her back in and let her rest up small clutch as i thought we have two sluggers 
Um, these potentially might be slugs. I'm gonna take can of these things, see what they look like. These two look, this one looks good, and this one's a small one, but it looks like it might be good as well. So we'll separate these. See, as you can see, I just kind of like, just basically just kind of work my fingers in there and separate them. And we'll see if they got some embryos in them, and then we'll set them up in the egg box. Uh, those two sluggers are in the garbage. These th four eggs all have the embryos in them, amazingly enough. Now, that doesn't mean they're gonna make it. Though that little one in the middle, if it makes it, it's gonna be a very small baby, I'm sure, but they're good. Four good eggs, so you know what? What looked like it was a very small snake that was gonna have a terrible clutch, or probably not a clutch at all, wound up delivering what looks to be four decent eggs with embryos and, and veins and everything in there. So you never can tell. Um, I saw another snake in the process of, of having some eggs too. We'll probably put that in the next video. So we're gonna throw these guys in the incubator or place them in the incubator, I should say. And in 60 days, we'll see what we got. We know we're gonna get all albinos, that's for sure. Hopefully they all hatch. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today. Uh, hopefully you guys have a great weekend planned. Hopefully you liked today's video on how to handle Burmese pythons. And, you know, one of the things that we didn't talk about is how to handle these big guys. You know, the, the best thing you can do is when you take out a big snake, you, you don't want them to think that there's any kind of food or feeding being done. Because if there is, they're going to grab whatever they can grab, you know. And especially if there is a smell of rodent in the room, that's not good either. So, you know, we, we talk about hook training and stuff like that. And the key is, you know, I take a hook and I just kind of rub them a little bit with it. Um, I'll usually grab the hook and I'll drag their, the rear part of their body. And the great thing is about a big snake like this, you can grab the rear part of their body and that's not going to really affect the head too much. I wouldn't just go reach in and grab the head, you know. Even if you know the snake really well, like I know this snake and the snake's not going to bite me, but I don't know, you know, maybe it's in a bad mood or it's going to sh go into shed or you never know. So you, you always pull it out with the hook first. You can tell the temperament if it's not essing up and it's kind of just chilling and like, all right, pull me out. Berms like to blow air and that's normal. That's not necessarily nasty behavior, but if they don't want to be bothered, they'll let you know, they'll ask up and they'll, you know, they'll try to get away from you. Once you get them out though, you can tell that they're, they're doing pretty good. If you're nervous, you know, you put a glove on uh, until you get them out, until you, until you really know your snake. Mine are at the stage right now where they're, they're just, like I said, they're like big, big dogs. They're like bull mastiffs that are just want to be played with and they never want to go back in she this girl this girl will be happy if she never goes back into her enclosure you know she just wants to stay out here all the time and i wish she could keep her out here all the time she's great but once again if you guys are interested in this any of my uh burmese python projects the pie project or my hypo granite double head albino greens i got that breeding pair female just laid a bunch of eggs this um this year 19 of them and She'll go next year probably too, as long as you feed her. She goes every year, three years in a row. So reach out to me. Once again, have a great weekend. Uh, you guys know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications, hit the like button. I'll see you back Monday morning.